Namaskaram to peeps, this is Harisha from Melbourne Yatri. Welcome to another tech episode. The Panasonic DCG9, or commonly referred to as G9, is quite essentially the best budget professional hybrid camera that you can buy in 2023. There is a reason uh, that I'm saying it, and I'll show you my reasoning actually around it and my thought process of why I arrived to that particular conclusion. To start off with is the price because it's a budget hybrid professional camera, right? So from a price standpoint of view, here in Australia, a DCG9 with its base lens, 12 to 60 mm lens, you would normally get it anywhere between $1,200 to $1,500. Most of the times in actually sales. The DCG9, normally when you spend an Australian dollars of $1,500, you would also get a 25 millimeter lens, which is equal to the Nifty 50, in the micro four thirds world. Now, being a micro four thirds camera, you might be thinking, you know, hey, can I really use this one for professional stuff? Yes, you can. And I have actually done professional work with this. I have paid client work I've done with this. Obviously, I've done some free stuff on it. And also, you know, personal uh, video and photos. And in terms of holding and weight, it's not a big deal. So it's a pretty good thing. But how does this camera the G9 actually qualify for being a professional hybrid camera. First thing first, the sensor inside it is a 20.3 megapixel sensor. So that's decent for video. It's very decent for photos that you're taking. Whether you're into bird photography, whether you're into real estate, whether you're actually into portrait photography, whether you're into weddings, what are professional work that you're doing, right? Or animal photography in that case, right? or you are doing it actually you know for some corporate setups you can definitely use this the second most important thing that makes it you know professional as you can see it has dual card slots right which is awesome so you can go ahead and record either into both the card slots or you can only record into one and then you can basically uh, have a continuous recording into the second one so you can keep swapping that off now the third thing that makes it a pretty good hybrid one, especially from a video standpoint of view, is here. So this is your mic input, and then, and just below that, you actually have your uh, 3.5 mm jack for your headphones to sit and listen. If you want to go ahead and listen to what your mic is actually capturing, you can go ahead and do that. This is essentially a five axis IBIS camera. So you are basically compensated from all the five axes. You get a very stable footage, right? G9, is very much comparable, at least in my personal opinion, to what a GH6 gives, but it also does amazing photographs in comparison to GH6. At least that's my personal opinion. If you think otherwise, please go ahead and comment below. If you are looking from a purely a photo standpoint of view, then the G9 actually has both the mechanical shutter as well as the electronic shutter. In electronic shutter, you do have both the first curtain as well as second curtain. It can take up to 12 photos per second on its mechanical shutter in a couple of focus modes. Whereas it will do only nine picks per second in mechanical shutter if you're doing a couple of focus modes. The cool thing which is there in this is to go ahead and actually have peaking enabled. It's very simple to enable and say that and you can start doing manual focusing. If someone who's basically completely relied on autofocusing and would like to learn to do manual focusing on a rig that they can actually expand their skills on and start doing larger jobs, you can definitely do on this one. Because this basically has peaking, it has histogram, and you can actually see both of it right on its actually LCD display. And then in addition to that, you can go ahead and put it in manual focus and start using both of them at the same time along with the leveler, which is like an inbuilt leveler into it. It is weatherproof to a certain extent, the body, and if you're using some of the Panasonic or Leica weatherproof lenses, then the whole system is actually weatherproof to a certain extent. Obviously, you can't put this inside water by itself without any casings or anything and think it's going to work. No, it's not going to, obviously, right? We know that. Most of the lenses that you actually get, until unless you're using Olympus systems or OMB lenses, Pretty much all the base Panasonic lenses that you would get for this are all having optic, uh, optical image stabilization, OIS or OSS, 
I think it's called OSS in this micro four thirds system. So that would use stabilization from the lens as well as the phi axis ibis which is there in the camera to go ahead and deliver you absolutely beautiful still images even when you're holding with a single hand like this and I can show you an examples of images like you can see now or you can also in fact take a video as long as you're holding it close to your body and then going ahead and shooting the video it's pretty good now it's LCD is obviously you know it's tiltable as you can see completely articulate so it actually helps you to take videos like this you know if you're extending your arm all the way till the top you can see from bottom or if you're extending your arm below your waistline then you can see like this on a display or you can also see it in your selfie mode in, in, in this format and that's my uh, Canon M6 Mark II another cool camera I don't know the reason why Canon has actually discontinued it but that's one hell of a very good camera to actually have I would have preferred having a Mark III version of a Canon M6 Mark II rather than the M50 Mark II at least that's my personal opinion now as you're upgrading your skills you can always have back button autofocus being enabled for you that's possible in this camera so you can keep upgrading your skills on it you can take 6k photographs you can create a 6k video out of it because open gate is allowed that's one of the beauties of panasonic lumix cameras open gate is allowed you can take a beautiful 6k video i would suggest you actually using a gimbal or most probably a tripod to go ahead and uh, use it when you're taking a 6k uh, video so that you can get that crystal clear video along with not much of a shake you know, because shaking hands really doesn't help in that much format battery lasts pretty good in this you get a, a decent uh, you know half day to full day battery based on the mix of uh, photos and videos that you're taking right and and if you want you can also give a USB-C power supply to it and then and, and get it done now as you're trying to improve your skill set Okay. and you want to use an external recorder for this so that it makes your life a little bit easier in trying to you know framing the composition of your shots or trying to look at fake colors and you know additional histograms and curves you have direct HDMI it's a full-size HDMI and this is one of the reasons why I say this is one of the best budget hybrid professional camera available you can start off with someone who's just using the automatic mode in this IA mode which is actually out here right uh, you can just use this or you can start progressing on your skill sets as you're going forward from P to A to S and obviously M and you definitely have three custom dial buttons here C1, C2, C3 and C3 actually has three software enabled furthermore customization so that means under C3 mode, you have three other additional modes that you can go ahead and actually configure. That's pretty cool if you ask me. And then you can do 4K 60p on this always, continuously. You do not worry about it. Obviously, it's going to only record up to 10 minutes, but no one does 4K 60p continuously more than 10 minutes. Normally, people would do only for a couple of minutes and that's it, not more than that. You can always go ahead and do 180 frames per second in a, a high shoot mode actually in this and then uh, it would go back and actually try to you know record it down to 30 frames per second and you can see that super smooth video but that's only in uh, in 8 bit you know 4 to 0 using the mechanical shutter in while taking still pictures you can go up to 1 by 8000 a second whereas in electronic whether you're using if you're using the first curtain you can go up to 1 by 2000 of a second and if you're using the second curtain, you could actually go up to one, one by 32,000 a second, which is pretty cool. Does basically give you an EV exposure compensation from minus five to plus five. I only see it useful from minus three to plus three, because the moment you cross either minus three or plus three, there is a little bit of color distortion that happens. The colors that come out of this in a natural profile, most of the times like according to me at least 80 to 90 percent of the times are directly useful you need not you know do much of a color correction out there at least what i've seen even for you know professional shots right it, it's pretty color accurate and uh, i'll basically making another video uh, showing different types of you know color profiles available in this uh, when you're doing videos uh, cine log t and cine log v and 
all that HLG and stuff. That's going to come in the next video. I actually bought after a, I think close to two years of savings, the A7 Mark IV. And I love the A7 Mark IV. And in my personal opinion, A7 Mark IV is far more better in uh, uh, you know in, in both video as well as uh, uh, a photo criteria that's the best hybrid camera for my style of shooting hybrid cameras are the best i would prefer hybrid cameras any given day over a dedicated photo camera or a dedicated video camera uh, just just purely because of my personal way of trying to shoot i mean you could have a different uh, profile and, and preferences of shooting and that's pretty cool right i mean everyone has their own choices actually out there in the world couple of things more to actually you know what i like on this particular uh, camera which i would like to show the cool thing here as you can see is right here you basically have dedicated buttons of exposure control okay iso and white balance you can click on any one of these buttons and then you can use this dial to go ahead and start changing its value and you can see all the readings here if you would like to or you could see it on the display if you would like want to. So that's with respect to functionalities, right? And we spoke a lot about why it's a very good still photo shooter. Now let's talk about why it's a very good even a video shooter, right? And especially where your five axis IBIS comes into picture. A lot of places where I thought, you know, I've shot an absolutely crappy shaken video turned out to be a pretty good decent video without using any external software for stabilization. The other thing is, even for photos, the five axis IBIS stabilization is so cool that I could just hold it with a single hand, okay, lens and the body, everything, and take pictures which are gorgeous in my opinion, or which are pretty good without any motion blur coming into that's the IBIS trying to come in and compensate all the jitters coming out from my hand, going left, right, center, up and down, or, you know, all the micro jitters that come into a hand. And you're holding a decent sized camera like this G9 along with the display out, but still giving you perfect pictures. For the video, one of the straightforward things is you could use the red button. That's the dedicated button for starting the video. Or you could also program your shutter button to actually start recording your video. You can record video in any of the modes, but then some of the high speed modes like 180 frames per second or 150 frames per second, it's only possible if you're trying to record it in the uh, movie mode. So you get to choose out of the four exposure modes, what mode you want to use when your dial is in the video making you know, option selected. So you can select P, you can select S, which is for shutter priority, you can select A for aperture priority. You can select EM for manual focus, right? where you can control all the parameters you want. Now, in addition to that, you do basically have a very specific mode called as high speed video mode in the G9. What that basically does is like an SNQ mode if you're coming from a Sony system, wherein it would go ahead and actually record in either 180 frames per second or 150 frames per second in full HD, okay, 1080p, or it would go ahead and record in 60 frames per second, 50 frames per second, or 48 frames per second in 4K, and then it will automatically slow down the video in the camera itself and give you a slow mo file. Now, that's a choice, but the moment you activate your high speed video, Many of the options are actually uh, blurred out. That means you cannot change many of them, you know, if you get what I mean. So it's, it's a very restrictive mode, but this mode is available. If you're trying to do slow-mo video for a B-roll, I wouldn't suggest that. But if you're doing a slow-mo video of a kid running, uh, an animal running, or, uh, you know, if you, if you are into basically doing product photography or real estate photography as a commercial work and you want to do a very soft movement, you can definitely use it. But then, uh, that's basically you're actually asking the camera to slow down. You have a beautiful alternative. If you don't need a 180 frames per second or 150 frames per second requirement, as long as you're comfortable with 60 and 50 frames per second, you can just go ahead and activate it in the regular mode, which is there in the camera. By default, you can choose between either recording in MOV or MP4. 
you do have basically AVC HD and EMP4 HEVC, but I don't use it. Either I would use uh, MOV or uh, MP4. By default, I have MOV selected only when uh, we go ahead and do the high speed, like an SNQ mode, you know, you couldn't high speed video actually in this. That's when I have MP4, otherwise, it's all MOV files for me. In terms of record quality, this $1,200 camera, right? This $1,200 to $1,500 based on the kind of kit lens you're trying to get and uh, you know, additional lenses you're getting, Australian dollars camera can do 4K 10 bit at 30p. It can do a 4K 10 bit at even 25p. Okay. It can do full HD, FHD, right? The 1080p. Okay. At 10 bit, 60 frames per second. You can do 422, right? If, if, if I'm not wrong, the, the 422 10-bit recording at full HD, that is 1080p, absolutely looking gorgeous for most of their use cases, including YouTube, at 60 frames per second. I mean, what else can we actually expect from a budget professional camera which has two card slots and a proper HDMI port in it. You can obviously do you know, 8-bit 60 frames per second on 4K. You can do an 8-bit 50 frames per second on 4K. You can definitely do 30 frames per second on 4K and obviously 24p. If you're doing 8-bit, you do get HLG available, but that's only when you're taking it as a HDMI out. If you're trying to record internally, I think you got to pay some $150 or $200 to enable uh, HLG and couple of other things. Otherwise, uh, you can do an external recording. I have not tried the external HDMI recording. When I try it, I'll definitely share it with y'all. But as of now, I'm pretty much happy in what I can actually record on the camera itself. I don't see a big use case of me trying to use an external display and a recorder as of now. But maybe as my professional work takes up and I keep learning and honing up my skills, I skill myself up, I'll be using an external recorder and uh, display actually. But uh, for now, I don't need it for the jobs I'm doing. You do have, you know, uh, multiple uh, full HDs, you know, in 10 bit as well as 8 bit. Uh, only thing is, when now you're choosing 8 bit, then you can do HLG. And when now you're choosing 10 bit, at some times you can do HLG, otherwise you'll get a VFR actually available. When you're doing 4K 8 bit, it's actually read, writing into at uh, 150 uh, megabits per second. That's what is having when you're doing 4K 8-bit at 60p. If you're doing 4K 10-bit at 30p, it still does 150 megabits per second as a write speed. So you got to have a very decent SD cards actually in the camera. Otherwise, uh, you will be actually have facing challenges. FHD, that is full HD 10-bit at uh, 60 frames per second, it's still 100 megabits per second, you know, writing into the SD card. You have all these professional video modes actually available for you. You have different kinds of photo styles available or the video styles. You have the natural, monochrome, L chrome, scenery and all that. And you can also do custom if you would like to and scenery like D and scenery like V, which comes by default. HLG comes in some formats. Now, if you want to do like raw format or, you know, a very base profile that comes to the Panasonic Lumix line, you got to spend like 200 bucks for it. For the current use cases I am having, I don't see a need for it. Obviously, you have stabilizer modes available. You can just have a, a proper, uh, you know, just body stabilization. You could have e-stabilization, which does both the 5-axis IBIS in it, as well as it uses the lenses inbuilt stabilization to go ahead and do it. In addition, it also has IS lock, which basically crops the video and try to do so. One thing I've noticed that as long as the top dial is actually in the movie mode, I don't see any crop in 4K 60 frames per second. But if I'm actually using the custom modes, the C1, C2, and C3, then I do see that, you know, there is a little bit of crop when I try to do 4K 60 frames per second. Now, you do have a crop mode available in this if you would like to. I don't use it at all, to be honest with y'all. You know, I just leave it as is. Obviously, you have all the compensations. You do have a mic level adjustment and mic level recording and all that being shown both in your LCD screen as an input. And you also have a mic level limiter where you can basically you know, limit an X amount of dB in terms of getting a clear this thing. 
obviously a timestamp recording is available that's then most of the cameras in terms of hdmi recording you do get a clean output that means you know there are no details given it's a completely clean output of hdmi uh, which is a regular hdmi output that you're getting and then in addition to that you could actually choose different you know mode rates in which you can do so you can do 422 10-bit or you can do 4208 back in and, and it's a it's a choice that you can choose i will be making a detailed menu video of uh, the g9 as well as i would be showing you all you know what different modes like uh, eye dynamic or eye resolution all this stuff actually do for you this is like intelligent resolution intelligent dynamic and all that stuff and i'll be doing subsequent videos to actually explain all that uh, for this video this is what my justification is you can record in two sd cards at the same time for your professional work and also for your precious personal photographs that you're trying to take of your family or your you know gatherings and friends and everyone and also your furry friends and everyone basically have hdmi output uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, you know standard hdmi type a output available in, in it you can record voice and you can also monitor the you know recording that is actually happening for the voice using the mic and the headphone receiver you have multiple modes of custom modes you have three custom modes available c1 c2 c3 and the third c3 custom mode has three more soft custom modes that you can do so you can literally dial down the way you want the camera to behave for different scenarios of both your personal usage as well as professional usage you're doing you have an open gate available for recording both still images as well as video uh, video is just pressing your you know shutter button continuously on and it'll just start recording you know the 6k continuous file okay uh, similarly you basically have multiple uh, you know modes in terms of uh, video recording you can do 4k 60 frames per second 8 bit you can do 4k 30 frames per second 8 bit but you can start doing full hd at 10 bit 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second or 30 and you know 24 frames per second so in that way you can do both i mean you can do 422 that is 10 bit you can do 420 which is 8 bit recording and if you actually have an external recorder like a, a ninja 5 or ninja 5 plus or any of these external recorders which are display recorders you can go ahead and use the standard hdmi type a cable and try to do an external recording of 422 that means a 10 bit 60 frames per second you can do an external recording no issues but in terms of internal recording into the cam you need to understand that all the 60 frames per second are only recorded up to 10 minutes as a continuous recording most of us only record like a couple of minutes and then we keep changing the clip so that's pretty much good for any professional work or personal work similarly in terms of a regular recording that is at a 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second you would only be uh, recording up to 30 minutes that I think is actually good enough. But if you're actually having an external recorder, I guess you can record it for pretty much long time. I have not faced any heating issues at all when I've done uh, 60 frames per second. In fact, I've done close to four hours with multiple bits of uh, 60 frames per second being recorded. I did not have any heating issues at all. No. If you want to explore and have fun with 180 frames per second or 150 frames per second speed, you can definitely enable on this camera. You can shoot up to 10 minutes on it. it gives an automatically slow down 30 or 24 frames per second equivalent element in it. So you can directly download and see that slow-mo video. You can take four images, you can take 6K images, and most importantly, because it allows you to do open gate, you can also do threes to two ratio images. By default, because there's a micro four third sensor, you get all images of four is to three. So if you're publishing to Instagram, you're publishing to Facebook, you're doing a lot of YouTube thumbnails and stuff, straight forward from the camera, minimum editing, you can go ahead and start publishing stuff. If you do a lot of stock videos as a professional work or you'd like, like to take any a lot of your personal uh, videos, it's a pretty good camera to go ahead and actually handle. You, know? you have two card slots in it, each of 128 GB. Okay, so that's close to 256 GB of memory space to go ahead and do your personal video and audio recordings and photographs oh you can basically easily get the job done for two to three days 
during your holidays all in all i'm very much happy to go ahead and uh, you know use a g9 if you do like this video please go ahead and give me a thumbs up that will be awesome a sub will be really great and uh, please do you know go ahead and comment your opinions actually below in the video i would like to go ahead and you know hear your thoughts and if you have any alternatives to the g9 please do drop it down actually in the comments until the next video wish you all the best stay safe and peace